most popular video on my channel has been showing my duplicator that I made for my wood lathe. Uh, the cutter part of the duplicator is a DeWalt angle grinder mounted into the homemade little uh, rig here that kind of carries it side to side. And uh, it utilizes a King Arthur Lancelot blade, which is two metal discs. And sandwiched between those metal discs is a chainsaw chain as a blade. Um, I've been getting a lot of interest in the duplicator itself, people asking a lot of aspects about its construction and maintenance of it. So I want to put this video together showing sharpening it, and I just use a chainsaw file to do so, a 530 seconds, I believe. Um, I've got it down there in the shop, and I'm going to show you how to sharpen it, and um, I'm going to try to put together more videos like this showing different aspects of using and maintaining the duplicator. The first step is finding the angle of the tooth. Take your file, sticking it in the cutting edge of the tooth, and tilt it back and forth until you match the angle. Then matching that angle, you just want to take light passes with your file until each tooth is sharpened. And what you're looking for is to remove the rounded over edge um, or any visible dullness. And you can kind of feel each tooth after you sharpen it. And then you, once you get rolling, you'll, uh, you'll get the hang of how many strokes it'll take per tooth. Once you sharpen down the tooth a good bit, you'll end up having to file down the depth gauge part of the link, and uh, this is so that the tooth has a proper cutting depth, and um, make sure you're cutting enough and not cutting too much. This is the first time I'm sharpening this particular chain, so I don't feel that I need to file down the gauge any. Once you get the hang of it, it's just a matter of working your way all the way around the wheel, filing each tooth. Here's a close-up look at the wheel, and you can see that there's no skip link between each cutting tooth. Um, this makes it possible to use the tool without it being too grabby. And as far as where you can get one of these, you can order them offline and buy them in some tool supply places. The tool is about $30. I wanted to finish off the video just showing a full-length version, nothing sped up, no camera magic of using the duplicator once the chain is sharpened. It's been a while since I've sharpened this uh, chain I've cut, I'm not sure how many legs, and all the wood is fairly dirty, so um, you will dull it over time, plus um, every once in a while I'll hit something that'll throw a spark, so not sure if that's some sort of dirt mixed in there, or if I'm hitting some sort of metal, not sure, but um, usually I try to check everything with a metal detector first because most of what I'm turning is reclaimed wood and the metal detector I use is just one of the little wand style ones and I bought it at Harbor Freight for those who are interested in buying an inexpensive metal detector that will work pretty good with boards to check for nails and other metal pieces that have gotten into it. One of the biggest questions that I'm getting on my YouTube channel on this video will more a comment is people giving me different types of ideas of ways to change this to make it work better or be safer or some people just seem to be trying to kind of complicate it. The one thing I really want to stick to is keeping this whole rig as simple as possible. That way for those of you out there who would like to make it, you can make it as simple as it is now or you can add to it making it more complicated to maybe be a little more feature-esque. But, um, for my situation, it, it works great, and the biggest thing is people talking about ways to overcome the fact that the um, that the lathe rotates towards me, and then that the grinder wheel is rotating towards the spindle. Um, and optimally, I guess in the first video, what I mentioned is that if the lathe could spin in reverse, that it would have a better cutting action. So I get people telling me to flip the grinder upside down is one of the comments, but then what would happen? is the grinder would be rotating up into it and with the lathe spinning tor towards it if it was ever to grab it would jerk the wheel into the uh, piece of wood that I'm turning which could cause some sort of you know dangerous situation or at least just hurt the piece of wood or jerk my um, jig out of alignment so the other thing people say is to stand on the back side of the lathe. Well, I'd have to remake the whole thing because of the way it mounts towards the headstock and with the tailstock. Um, and also, the lathe is up against a wall or either up against a staircase, depending on where I had it placed. So that really wouldn't work for me either. For me, it comes down to two main points. Uh, as it is the way it's built, if the grinder was to grab on the piece of wood, it would just lift up a little bit. If it was rotating the opposite direction, the grinder, 
it would pull under the piece of wood and that could be pretty dangerous. Also, the biggest factor is if you do the math looking at the time on the clock on this video, you'll see that I pulled off of that pretty much exactly at three minutes. And to rough something out in three minutes and only require one minute of cleanup, that's not too bad. Well, thank you for watching, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and leave a comment.